You're watching the Luca Rosano Show. Here's your host, Luca Rosano. Welcome back, everyone, to the Luca Rosano Show. I'm your host, Luca Rosano, and this show is presented by Dave and Buster's Vaughn. This week's guest, I'm super excited to have Toronto Raptors beat reporter for TSN, Josh Lewenberg. Josh, thanks so much for joining the show, man. How you doing? Good, man. How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. We're uh, finally going to have some basketball to uh, talk about uh, in, in a week. Um, before we get into that, Josh, I kind of want to just start off by getting into your career. Um, before, you know, you obviously got with TSN, take me in the beginning days of your life. Like, did you grow up a basketball fan? I did, yeah. So I, I would say I, I started really getting into basketball in, in 95 as the Raptors came into existence um i fell in love with sports through basketball so damon stoudemire was probably the first star player that i that i fell in love with and the fact that he like myself is not an especially tall individual and yet was still putting up big numbers and leading the team and doing all the fun things that he was doing at the time i mean that sort of spoke to me and then as the team got better and better and vince carter and and all that over the years, I, I did. I was, a, I was a basketball fan long before I was a basketball or even a, a sports reporter um, in, in terms of my life and, and work. Um, growing up, um, I, I worked at Canada's Wonderland, actually, was my first job. I oh, worked wow. uh, in, yeah, I worked in uh, games and I was a glorified carny at Wonderland. But through that, I sort of got into retail management a little bit, and that's where I was that's the industry that I was in initially when I was younger is retail management, working in stores. And then I got into banking a little bit. And it was actually through working at um, TD bank downtown Toronto, where I met somebody who is good friends with Tim McAuliffe. Okay. Um, who got me an internship at the score where I, I worked for a little while and fell in love with the other side of sports. And it's really something that I've always kind of wanted to do. I just never really knew how to go about doing it is to be in sports broadcasting in journalism. So through the internship, I, I fell in love with that side of the business and went back to school for a year. So I, I went to Centennial College and did sports journalism there and got an internship at TSN. That was about 10 years ago. And I've been at TSN ever since. That's awesome, man. And uh, just a fun fact there, you worked at Wonderland. I'm from Vaughn, so I know I Wonderland very, very well. That's actually cool. Um, so while you were with TSN, how did you work your way up, if you will, to get to the current position uh, that you have right now as, uh, as the Raptors beat reporter? Yeah, I, I think a lot of it, like most things in life, is, is right place at the right time. Um, I was in school in 2011. Um, and just about to graduate, and one of my teachers there was Jim Taddy, who had just started at TSN Radio. TSN Radio had actually just launched, so uh, 1050 launched in, I guess it would have been April, I think, of 2011, and I started interning there through Jim's uh, assistance at, it would have been uh, May or June of 2011, so just a couple months after the station launched, so it, still very new and, and everyone was still sort of getting their feet wet. Um, as an intern there, there was a ton of opportunity to grow. Um, instead of going to, to radio stations or, or places that had been around a while, where as an intern, you maybe would have been a needle in a haystack. Um, there were only a few interns. There were still a lot of job opportunities and things that they were looking for at the time. And I, I guess probably the best thing about it was as a, as a basketball person, the NBA was in the middle of their lockout. It was the 2011 season, and TSN Radio had just launched. They didn't have a plan, really, for Raptors, because I don't think anyone knew when basketball was coming back. And then, of course, as you know, and as I'm sure we'll talk about, basketball, not such a big deal in Toronto and in Canada back in 2011. Things yeah. have changed a little bit. Um, so they didn't really consider that. And then all of a sudden, basketball comes back in December, and they don't have a basketball reporter. So I was just starting to do a little bit of freelance producing and reporting uh, for the radio station when basketball came back. And they said, OK, Josh, we, we don't really have anybody right now. So can wow. you go and just freelance at it? At that time, it was the only preseason home game that they had that season against Boston. I remember it well. I went and I guess I didn't screw things up too badly. <laughs> so they're like, all right, go back to game two. And then go back to game three. And, and 
for for the first season, it was a 66 game season, I think. So for the first season, I was just doing freelance. They were just sending me to each game. And then the second year I did uh, games and practices. And then I think it was the third year where they hired me full time. And I, I did full time travel for a couple of years, all 82 games. Um, and, and I've just sort of been growing in the role ever since. At the time, it was just radio. And then uh, I would do a little bit of writing. And then it was probably my fifth or sixth year where they had me start to do TV as well. So it, it's been nice. I, it, it, it hasn't felt necessarily like I've been in the same place or in the same role for 10 years, even though I've been with the same company for 10 years, because it, it's it's been nice to, to grow within the company, I would say. And obviously the Raptors have gotten a lot better and have given uh, myself as well as everybody else a lot more to talk about over the years as well. Yeah, talk about uh, right place at the right time. Uh, that was awesome. You made obviously the most of that opportunity and you've been doing a great job since. Would you say this is your dream job? I mean, uh, I can only imagine it is. I'm a, I do a lot of Raptors content on this YouTube channel. And, and Josh, I essentially want your job. <laughs> Uh-oh. Should I be looking over my show? No. I, <laughs> well, I've, I've, listen, I, I've, I've watched your stuff, Luca. You, you do a fantastic job. You do a great job. And, and thanks for, for having me on. I, I love doing this. I love talking about Because as I said, first and foremost, I'm a fan. I was a fan before I was a reporter. So I, I love talking about the team, the game, um, and um, yeah, I mean, it's 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 been it's been fun. Yeah, for sure. So many perks with it as well, but a lot of hard work. And uh, I want to ask you now, Josh, with the pandemic, obviously uh, the biggest thing going on in the world right now. How has that changed the way you do your job, and how has that affected your your day to day? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's. I think whether you're in sports or, or regardless of what your profession is, whatever industry you're in, the, the pandemic has touched you in the way that you do your job and the way you live your life in some way. It's been an adjustment for, for everybody. It, it's been strange to cover sports without there actually being any sports. And now it's, it's, it's great that we're gearing up to talk about basketball again and baseball starting up and hockey is starting up. Um, but... Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's forced us to be creative, more creative in the way that we cover things. And, and um, I know very early on in the pandemic, a lot of it, there was, there was a lot of nostalgia when it came to Raptors coverage, right? So much of what I was doing, what a lot of people were doing were lo was looking back because we didn't have anything to look necessarily forward to. We didn't know when there would be basketball again. So yeah. at, at TSN, we, we replayed the whole championship run. It was nice going back and watching that and covering that again. And even going back to, to like various highlights throughout the um, the franchise's history, and, and I guess it's it's interesting timing in that it's also the 25 year anniversary of the franchise. So there's been a lot of ways to tie into that. But yeah, I mean it, it's been it's been really different, and it's going to continue to be really different now. Is I mean it's going to be the, my first time covering games without actually being there to to physically cover the games yeah. and. For guys like Matt Devlin, Jack Armstrong, Leo Routens, the guys that are calling the games, they're going to be doing it remotely. So it's going to be different an adjustment for them. I think for everybody, it's going to be really different. But for, for everybody, I think it's going to be great in a time where there's so much going on in the world. And, and um, it, it's been really tough for a lot of people to have sports back and, and to even have a, a bit of a distraction in that way or, or some entertainment during these hard times will will be really good with the obvious caveat and I'm surprised it's taken this long to get to this obvious caveat I feel like we'll bring it up a few more times it'll be really great provided that everything goes smoothly from a health and safety standpoint that seems to be the thing that everybody's coming back to when it comes to the NBA bubble and whether or not sports is going to be able to go go forward at all uh, but assuming that it can be done safely it's going to be great to have it back yeah you uh, read my mind Josh that was actually what I was going to ask you next as you know uh, the number of COVID cases continue to rise in Florida as uh, the NBA restart is going to be officially underway on July 30th based on what you've heard and from some of the conversations that you've had with players how are the Raptors feeling are they confident that this thing is going to work and th that they're going to be safe throughout they're confident and they feel good. They feel safe. At the same time, again, the caveat has to be like, you're not you're not going to feel the virus coming before it comes, right? It's one of those things. It's 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 a silent killer. It's 
the enemy that you can't see. So while it's great to feel safe, I, I don't know that you would feel unsafe in the alternative situation where things aren't as as set up to to, to keep everybody um, to keep everybody safe. But yeah. that said, I mean the NBA has clearly done a great job in terms of I. I I don't necessarily approve of the location. I think they probably could have chosen a better spot in, in terms of a uh, place to set up and, and, and to build the bubble. But in terms of the actual bubble itself and the, the safety procedures and the precautions that they have, I, I mean, it, it's better than baseball with, with teams expected to bounce back and forth and travel from place to place throughout the, the pandemic. And, um, I mean, even hockey, I, I think basketball's probably got the best plan. It's just not being done in, in the best place. So, I mean, I think so far so good in that regard. And, I mean, the Raptors, they've been in Florida longer than any other team in this bubble sort of environment longer than every, every other team. So when they say that they feel safe and they feel comfortable, um, it, it, it probably means something more than if, if one of the other teams were to say just because they the sample size is larger for them. But, I mean... I just think you can have the best plan in the world. You can have all the safety measures uh, put in place, but things can change at the snap of a finger. All of a sudden, yeah, your plan is gone, and you've got to pull the plug and start from scratch. So ho here's hoping that that doesn't happen. So far, so good in the sense that uh, the bubble plan seems to be going going well. Let's assume the bubble does, in fact, work throughout, and um, and you know we do see games. Let's talk about the Raptors here for a brief moment. So they got back to practicing a week ago. Uh, it was their first time on the court since that game against the Jazz, uh, where it looks like, you know, the, the, the world seemingly entered a, a new phase. Uh, can you tell us uh, how those practices went and uh, how, the, how the players are feeling coming out of those practices? Well, it sounds like Nick Nurse is getting a chance to, to utilize probably his biggest strength as a coach, and that's his flexibility. Um, this is not a time to be rigid. This is not a time to have a, a strict structure that you're sticking to, whether it's in practice or, or certainly in terms of your overall uh, lifestyle in the bubble. You've got to be flexible because this is just such an unprecedented, unusual situation, uncharted territory for everybody. So they're all getting used to it, and it sounds like Nurse has had to go with the flow a little bit here in practices. They've started off, I think, pretty in intense the first few days days and even the first hour or so of practice they go hard and play a lot of five on five because that's what everybody has to catch up on at this point they've done their individual workouts I think they're probably pretty good in terms of like okay they've got their shot back or they're they're getting back into rhythm a little bit it's going to be the conditioning and getting back to game shape and it sounds like that's where they're behind like everybody else is behind right now so they, they've had to take some breathers probably in places where they haven't had to take some breathers before guys have had yeah. to pull themselves out of practice and maybe nurses had to end a few sessions early, but um, it, it sounds like they're making progress that they're obviously ahead of where they were a week ago and getting closer to being able to run these scrimmages or exhibition games or whatever it is that they are and, and ease their way in that way. And they hope to be ready come August 1st when these seating games, the regular season restarts. Uh, Josh, next I want to talk about some of the veterans on this team. First, starting with uh, Kyle Lowry. I know you had a chance to speak with him. I know he poked a little bit of fun with the whole Zoom uh, thing. Um, Kyle's leadership on and off the court has received a ton of positive attention lately. How important will Kyle's leadership be for the Raptors as they approach this rest of the season under very different circumstances? It's already been huge, Luca, because as you know, like these teams go, come and go as, as their leader does. They set the example. They're the guy that everybody wants to follow. So in a situation like this, where there is so much uncertainty and where there are so many reasons not to be unified, either guys are, are torn about the, the safety measures and whether or not they feel comfortable coming back in a pandemic. Or, of course, we know there, there are big racial issues um, that are, are in, in, in play um, throughout the United States and in the world right now as well, where guys are understandably reluctant to go back and to play basketball when there are just bigger things going on in the world. But you have Lowry, who is leading in, in the right way and, and, and doing the right things, I think, in such a tough time. He was hands-on and very involved in 
the process of actually putting the the restart plan together yeah. with a group of players working closely with the NBA as part of that committee. And then, by all accounts, he's been one of the most vocal players in the league in terms of the Black Lives Matter movement and working to inspire meaningful action and meaningful change, both within the organization, where he's been one of the most vocal guys, and then around the league and in the community. So I think, first of all, that's setting a great example, and that's leading in the right way. But then also coming back and saying, okay, if we're going to do this. One, we're going to use our platform. And they're doing that. The Raptors as a team have done a really good job of that. And two, we're gonna, if we're going to do this, we're going to do this the right way. We're going to be committed to coming back and playing hard and, and playing Raptors basketball and, and trying to chase another title and win another title. And I think he's been at the forefront of that. He's really been um, a strong proponent of doing it, doing it and coming back safely, following all the safety measures. And that's huge as a leader, right? Because if you had the number one guy that was – that wasn't wearing his mask and that was breaking all the rules and, and yeah. not taking things seriously that nobody else will. He's taking things seriously. He's um, really supporting the NBA in everything that they're doing to try and keep everybody safe and bring uh, basketball back. So I already think the leadership has been huge. And then obviously it's going to get bigger and bigger as things go forward here. And, and obviously the on-court leadership, we haven't even talked about, I feel like I've been talking for like 10 minutes here about Kyle Lowry. We haven't even talked about all the things he does on the court where we know obviously he's been a tremendous leader for years now. So um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's just the, the player and the person that Kyle Lowry has become. And who would have thought we'd be saying that when he got here eight years ago, but he's really blossomed, blossomed into a great leader, both on and off the court. Just like a fine wine, just getting better with age. Next, let's talk about uh, Skinny Mark Gasol, another veteran on this team. You wrote a piece about uh, Slim Down Mark and how he should be a difference maker for this Raptors team over at uh, TSN.ca. What type of productivity do you expect to, uh, expect to see from Gasol here, Josh, uh, coming off of his uh, hamstring injury? Well, I think regardless of what the how much he weighs, um, the, the, the impact is there regardless, right? I mean... Even early on in the season where he, he wasn't that, as sharp as he's, as he's been offensively, he was struggling with his shot, he just looked gassed, understandably so, after all the basketball that he had played the previous year between um, Memphis and the trade and the Raptors and the championship and the uh, uh, FIBA World Cup. That's right. Um, so you, you could see it in the way that he was playing. He wasn't at his best. Then he was battling all the injuries, and yet he still – leads the Raptors in terms of net rating. They are a much better team when he's on the court than when he's off the court on both sides of the ball. Uh, he makes just about every other player on the team better when he's out there than, than when he, he isn't. And that's with Gasol not at his best and not in, in, in his best shape. Now, presumably, he's fully healthy. The hamstring is healed. He's lost all that weight. He's in the best shape that he's been in in years, maybe ever, because he's never really a guy like like Lowry. He's never really a guy that's been known for elite athleticism or elite quickness. It's always been his mind. Yeah. But if he's still got that mind, which is obviously like while well, your conditioning may need to catch up after a long layoff or you, you need to get your rhythm back, basketball intelligence, like that hasn't gone anywhere. And that's why I think the Raptors as a team – have an advantage here because they've got guys like Lowry and because they've got guys like Gasol. So that's not going to change. And then if he's in better physical condition and he's able to uh, maintain that the stamina, the high level of play for longer periods of time, if he's able to uh, move a little bit quicker, um, maybe he gets uh, more rebounds. Maybe he's um, a, a little bit lighter on his feet, quicker to get back uh, on defense that's going to make him even more valuable. So I, I think it's huge. Um, I still don't fully think we've seen the best version of Gasol with, with the Raptors. I, I'm, I still think they're kind of figuring out how to utilize him um, to his full potential, especially on the offensive end. So, uh, I, I mean, I, I think he's going to have – if he's healthy, I think he's going to have a huge impact on how the, these things shake down. And, and it just makes them probably an even tougher out in the Eastern Conference. And, and – increases their chances of coming out of the East and going back to the finals. 
and not to mention his body transformation just shook social media as we know it. Yeah. I mean, how many we're still seeing how uh, great and big of a transformation it has been uh, from Marcus Saul. Uh, we're gonna see all these players back and uh, in action at the Raptors' first scrimmage, which will be taking place against the Rockets on Friday. Then the Raps are gonna play uh, the Blazers and the Suns. Uh, three exhibition games just to shake off the cobwebs before we get into the serious games. What are you most interested to see during these uh, exhibition games, Josh? Maybe just in terms of where guys are at from a conditioning standpoint. And I guess how Nick Nurse manages these games, I, I think they'll be pretty uh, relaxed in, in terms of minutes and, and how hard guys are going. Obviously, they're not necessarily going to be playing to win. It's going to be more about one getting back into game shape and two, just making sure the guys stay healthy. And I don't think that's going to be that different from the actual regular season games. The Raptors have a little bit more to play for than I originally thought. Once yeah. we found out about the restart, we know they're not catching Milwaukee for first, but initially I figured, okay, well, they're probably going to hold off Boston for, for second. Now. I mean, I don't know. The schedule is really tough for the Raptors. Boston has a much easier schedule. They face Washington once. They face Brooklyn once. There's a, the game between the two teams on, I think it's August 7th, so obviously that's going to be a big one. Um, and then I think second is a little bit more important than I thought it was also. I mean, at first I'm like, okay, well, home court advantage is no longer a factor, but it sounded like Oladipo is going to be out for Indiana, so... Uh, falling to third and maybe playing the Pacers, who I assume would fall to sixth in that scenario, wasn't that big of a deal. Now, if Oladipo plays and that's still an unknown, then Indiana, I mean, Indiana's probably a tougher out anyway than Orlando and Brooklyn would have been. So I, I still think there's a bit of uh, something to play for for the Raptors in, in those games. But more than anything, I mean, hey, even before the pandemic, even before the hiatus, the Raptors were prioritizing rest and preparing for the playoffs. So I don't think that changes now. I think even once these games get started for real, even after the scrimmage games, we're going to see guys on minutes caps or maybe a, a few guys get uh, get nights off here or, or there. And then as Pascal Siakam was talking about yesterday, it, it's about peaking at the right time for them. And as a championship team, they understand that better than than most teams would. Yeah, it is all about the playoffs for this Raptors team. So I, I got to ask you here, Josh, um, you know, obviously they're healthy. They're ready to go. How do you see the Raptors stacking up in the East come playoff time? I think they're in good shape. I, I mean, there are probably pros and cons for every team in, in terms of having a long layoff like this. The Raptors are an older team. So I think in that sense, it might take them more time to get guys back into shape and into rhythm. I mean, Lowry is a good example of that. I think if you, you look at, at how he normally plays at the beginning of every season, he's a little bit rusty. And then whenever he misses uh, any amount of time, even if it's just a game for rest and he comes back, he's usually a little bit rusty. He's a guy that needs to be in, in rhythm. But another thing I'll say, and I'll use Lowry as an example, is when is Lowry at his best? It's usually in December, January, it's it's earlier in the season. Maybe not at the very beginning, but it's once he gets into his groove and before the wear and tear of a long season takes its toll towards the end of the year. And I always say with Lowry, he would be incredible. He'd be at his best if the playoffs somehow started at the beginning of the year instead of the end of the year, which was always a joke. It never seemed like it could happen. But now it's actually going to happen. I mean, the playoffs start very close to what essentially amounts to the beginning of a new season, which is what this is going to feel like for the Raptors. So yeah. I think that that's really good news for them. I think that that gives them a huge advantage, a fresh Kyle Lowry, a fresh Marc Gasol. Um, you've got like Norman Powell was banged up before. He's going to be rested and, and Van Vliet had, had bumps and bruises as well. So more than probably any other team, the time off I think has been good for them in that regard. They were one of the most injured teams all season. Um, so I think they're in good shape. They were in good shape even before this thing uh, in terms of the Eastern Conference. You've got Milwaukee and then a bunch of other teams. So they're still right there with Boston. They're still right there with, I, I mean, Philadelphia is interesting. They've had a, a up and down type of season, but they've got all that talent that come playoff time, you, you know, it, it is going to be dangerous. Miami's really good. So there are a bunch of teams there, but 
I mean, the Raptors have the championship pedigree, even in terms of the, the matchup with Milwaukee, if it comes down to that. They've got the confidence that they can beat them because they have beat them. They know they can defend and, and neutralize Giannis. They've got the versatility on, on both ends of the floor, but particularly on the defensive end where they're the second best team and have guys like OG and Pascal and even Rondé Hall's Jefferson, they can throw it. Giannis and, and Tatum and all these elite wings that they might face. So I, I, they're confident. They, they feel like they've got a good shot. And I mean, from the outside looking in here, I, I think they've got a, a pretty good chance. Now, the caveat is who knows with the restart? Who knows with the virus? All it takes is a few positive tests for any team. And all of a sudden they go from a contender to uh, a non-contender. That's the ultimate wild card here in this scenario. It's not a player it's not an x factor it's not the, it's it's the virus and and yeah. how it's going to play out in this bubble scenario but uh, assuming that things break the right way not only for the league in the in the bubble but also for the team health wise and all of that I, I think the raptors have a good shot well we'll see how it all goes down nba coming back of course july 30th and the raptors officially getting back at it august 1st uh, as they will be taking on the lakers josh Appreciate your time, man. But before we get out of here, I got to do some fun rapid fire with you. You ready? Let's do it. First question here. Choose your character. Skinny Mark, Jack Matty Ice, Bearded OG Ananobi, Buff Boucher, or Zoom Kyle? I got to go with um, social media superstar Skinny Mark. That's a really good choice. Uh, second question here. If you were going to the Orlando bubble, what would be the first thing you'd pack? Oh, that's a good question. The first thing I would pack. I travel light, man. I don't know. I'm not a video game guy. <laughs> I have my, like, Nintendo. So, so true story, uh, I, I'm not a video game guy at all. I used to be. Um, so one of the first things I did in the pandemic when I'm, like, looking for things to do at this point, like, it was even before any of the restart plans or anything. It work w was light at that point. I haven't old Nintendo 64 that was collecting dust in my closet. I didn't even have the right cords to connect it to my TV. So I ordered a cord to connect it to the old system, to the new TV. So I've been playing old school like GoldenEye and like Super Mario, Mario Kart and all of that. So maybe I'd bring the N Nintendo 64. I'd probably get uh, made fun of pretty bad by all these guys on there with their Fortnite and their PS4s and stuff. But what can I say? I'm... I'm an OG when it comes to the video games. Yeah, I, I love it. I, I could definitely dig that. Uh, next one here. Game on the line for the Raptors. Who do you want taking the final shot? Fred Van Vliet. I'm going off the board. I imagine most people would say Pascal Siakam. Listen, I want the ball in Pascal Siakam's hands because I think, one, he is willing to make the right play and he's capable of making the right play. And in some cases, that play might be the pass. So if somebody like Van Vliet is open, um, he's going to set him up. But I just love a guy like Freddie Van Vliet at the end of a game, not afraid to take the big shot, um, obviously has hit a lot of big shots and is capable of hitting big shots. Those are the guys you need. And, um, and yeah, I, I think I'd go with Freddie. When you're not reporting on the Raptors, what are you doing? Um playing Nintendo 64, I guess. No, um, I, I love watching movies, Netflix, um, listening to music. Um, I've gotten into Sudoku recently. I've been doing a lot of like puzzles and stuff to keep the, the brain juices flowing. Yeah, nothing, nothing too exciting. Nothing too crazy. No uh, after hours Josh here, just straight textbook. <laughs> I'm boring, man. What can I say? <laughs> Um, what's been your favorite career moment so far? What would you say that is? Um, I mean, probably the championship. It, it's hard not to say the championship. I still say, though, the, the most fascinating season that I've ever covered and the most fun that I've ever had covering the Raptors was actually not the championship season, which was great and obviously a, a unique and, and maybe once in a lifetime experience, but also like there was something about it with the whole Kawhi situation, all the pressure that the team was under and um, the expectations and all of that. There was something about it that was sort of tense in a way that my favorite season to cover wasn't. And, and that's the, 
believe it was the 13-14 season. That So personally, that was a highlight season for me. It was the first season where I was on the road and traveling with the team. Um, and when the season started, we figured, okay, well, this is going to be a bad team. They had Rudy Gay, and, and there was all that team. talk about all that talk about tanking for Wiggins and all of that. And, and then they get off to this terrible start. And I'll never forget that night in L.A. Uh, where they trade Rudy. And it seems like the beginning of the end or the beginning of the tank. Uh, the plan was to trade Lowry. And we figure, okay, yeah, it's only right. a matter of time until we're covering this terrible, terrible team. Um, and then they turn it around, and nobody ever expected it. Lowry blossoms into a star. Damar blossoms into a star. Um, they they go on to have that thrilling seven-game series against the Nets, which was so incredibly fun, if for no other reason than it had been so long since the Raptors had been in the playoffs. I had never covered a playoff game before. The fans were excited. That building was crazy every night. I still say the loudest that I've ever heard it in that building was game seven, Darren Williams at the free throw line. Um, so that, I mean, outside of the championship, which it's hard not to, to say the, the game six in golden state and then covering that parade, which was crazy, but the 2013, 14 season, I'll always remember. You said you're a movie guy. What's your favorite genre of, uh, of movies? Um, I'm really into a lot of the superhero stuff, but like I, I like more of the darker ones than I. So Dark Knight is probably my favorite movie ever, um, and then a bunch of the Marvel ones are good. Um, trying to think what else I like. I mean, a good comedy is always good. Um, some of the ones that stand out. Um, Super Bad is great. That's a classic. Knocked up. Like I love I love movies like that. Um, but, but yeah, I'm into my, my, my taste with movies and music is pretty eclectic. I'll, I'll give anything a shot. I'll watch anything, especially if it's well done. So like I was really into game of Thrones and it was something I never thought that I would like just because I'm not really into the whole like fantasy genre, but it, it's just so incredibly well done that I got into it. Breaking bad. I was huge into breaking bad. And now better call Saul is, is probably the best show. My favorite show on TV it's things like that that are just so incredibly well done that I eventually get into regardless of genre or TV movie. If it's good, I'll watch it. Send that, that recommendations good. That, my that, way. I'm, look, I'm looking for something else to binge now. Yeah, for sure. And last one here I got for you, uh, Josh. What's the best career advice you've ever gotten? Um... Probably just to be persistent with it, you know, and, and there are so many reasons to give up when, in an industry like this. It, it's tough. It's, it's only getting tougher. There, there aren't a ton of jobs. Um, there, there are a lot of people, even the people that have succeeded, that say, don't do it. Find, find a different <laughs> career path. And I remember that's one of the things that stands out about uh, school for me is I remember every day, every week, we'd have these guest speakers that come in and say, tell horror stories and say, don't do it. But it's one of those things that if, if you want it bad enough, like anything else in life, there's going to be luck involved, right place at the right time, as I talked about earlier. But um, those who want it bad enough to stick it out and to work hard and to commit themselves to it, um, and, and if you're passionate about it and if you're good at it, uh, I, I do think there are plenty of success stories. There are plenty of reasons to want to do it. And obviously, if it's something that you've always dreamt about and you're passionate about it, it it's worth doing because like like anything I say, it's it's life's too short to to do something that you you don't love to do. Well said. Um, it, it's it's great if you can do something for work that doesn't feel like work that you love to do. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I've I, I've heard from a few people over the years that that have really spoken about being persistent with it that's the advice i, I would give to, to younger people coming up and, and wanting to to be in the industry is stick with it work hard network um meet people um pay it forward and um 
and, and say yes to, to everything. I mean, you can't turn down opportunities, whether, I mean, I, I, when I was talking earlier about right place at the right time, it just so happened that they needed a basketball reporter. Basketball was always the sport that I loved and that I wanted to do. But I mean, whether it's, whether it's hockey or, um, or baseball or, um, I, I covered like a NASCAR event, a anything that you can do when, when you're younger, any kind of experiences that you can get in the industry to meet people and to get reps on air reps. If you want to write, um, do a lot of, you could, you could start a blog or write a blog, just get as much experience as you can and, and don't turn down opportunities. Very well said, Josh. And on that note, we're going to conclude here. That was awesome. Thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate it as uh, you're about to be super busy in the next couple of weeks and months as uh, we will see how the Raptors do. We will see how the NBA comes back. And, and hopefully um, there isn't no you know severe second wave and we just see sports come back and, and uh, you know normalcy officially set in. So uh, we will see how it all goes down. But thank you so much, Josh. And uh, again, I, I really do appreciate your time here. That was a lot of fun, Luca. Thanks for having me on. Let's do it again sometime. Take care and uh, stay safe, my man. Thank you so much. That, ladies and gentlemen, Josh Lewenberg of TSN. Please like this video, subscribe, and uh, thank you so much for watching. I will catch you all again in the next video. Peace out.